Hello and welcome to the episode 342 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have the Beatles' first encounter with a new drug, the release of Magical Mystery Tour in UK, and the tragic death. Let's start with two engagements the Beatles had on the 8th of December 1961. The band, still featuring Pete Best on drums, started with a lunchtime concert at a Cavern Club in Liverpool and went on with a night engagement at the Tower Barroom in Wallasey. These were special gigs. In addition to their own performances, the lads had the chance to back singer Davy Jones at both venues. Davy Jones was a South African-born black performer who currently had a record in the hit parade. His Moon River was at number four. It was a great chance for the band to do something different with a big recording artist, courtesy of their involvement with Sam Leach, the local promoter who had booked Jones to come to Liverpool. According to Beatlesbible.com, it was also the chance for the Beatles to try a new drug, cocaine. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, in their definitive lineup, were on stage at the Oasis Club in Manchester. In 1963, the Beatles' British tour saw the Fabs on the stage of the Odeon Cinema in Lewisham, London. In 1964, Ringo Starr, still hospitalized at the University College Hospital in London, after having his tonsils removed, was visited by George Harrison. One year later, on the 8th of December 1965, the Beatles were busy with another British tour. This time, they played at Gaumont Cinema in Sheffield. After their concert, they were visited by the Muddy Blues back at their hotel. 1966, long day at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. Between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, Paul McCartney was alone in the big Studio One, recording his lead vocal track for When I'm 64. Then, from 7 pm to 3.40 am, all the Beatles were in Studio Two to work on a remake of Strawberry Fields Forever, recording takes 9 to 24, although, for some reason, there was no take 8, nor any take 19. The work focused on percussions with Ringo on drums, Paul and George on timpani and bongos, and Beatles assistant Marl Evans on tambourine. After that, engineer Jeff Emerick tried to edit together the first three quarters of take 15 with the last quarter of take 24 to produce a workable best take 25, but the attempt was unsuccessful. One year later, on the 8th of December 1967, Magical Mystery Tour was released in United Kingdom, two weeks before the film of the same name came out. The release posed the problem to EMI. Six songs were too many for an EP, but too few for an LP. One solution, having an EP playing at LP speed, that is, slower. EPs typically play at 45 round per minute, while LPs play at 33 and a third round per minute, was discarded, as this would have caused a loss in volume and fidelity. So, another option was accepted. The release would have been a never tried before double EP set, with a sturdy gateful sleeve and a 28 page booklet with all the lyrics. The price of the item was less than a pound. 19 shillings 6 pence, about 18 pounds in 2020 money. The release was a runaway success, although it never reached the number one in the singles chart. A honor denied by another Beatles single, Hello Goodbye. Two years later, in 1969, between 10 am and 12.15 pm, Ringo Starr recorded a new vocal track for Octopus's Garden, with unknown session musicians recording a bass, a lead guitar, and a piano part on the song. The work, completed in 10 takes, 
was necessary to prepare the song for George Martins with a little help from my friends, a special for Yorkshire Television to be recorded on the 14th of December. And I do need all the help I can get from friends and enemies too. Visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can be instrumental in me producing more and better music-related content for you to enjoy. Any help will be greatly appreciated. Thank you! Let's close this episode with the tragic end of John Lennon, shot to death on the 8th of December 1980, just outside the entrance of the New York's Dakota Building, where he lived with Yoko Ono and their son Sean. As it happened with George Harrison, I won't give you the gory details. The story of how Mark Chapman killed John Lennon is all over the place, and it's a rather tragic one, in every sense. For months, George, Paul and Ringo were afraid that copycats could try to take their lives in the same way Chapman had with John's. Luckily, if such a term can be used in these circumstances, it was an isolated act by a psychotic individual. This sad circumstance ends our episode today. Join me tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.